Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my co-host, Anel. Anel, how are you doing? Great, how are you? Okay, and this is uh, episode number 96, Free Will, with Sam Harris Gets Right and Wrong, part three. Um, we may go into part four, part five, because like, we want to go cover this like in a lot of detail. Sam Harris is a three-time New York Times best-selling author. He wrote The Moral Landscape, The End of Faith, and in March 2012, he came out with Free Will. Okay, And the reason it's so important, because like, it's published by Simon & Schuster, it's really the only book that refutes free will that is like published, that's not self-published. Because like, Anel and I wrote books, but we self-published them. And like, so this is major, you know, he's really like taking this, you know, free will thing really into the mainstream, it, you know, it resulted in a lot of articles in 2012. Naturally, Anel and I kind of like started all this in, in 2010 to create the buzz. And then, you know, like Sam has just amplified it immensely. All right. So basically, we're covering his book, what he got right, we got wrong. Um, before we go into this, just like let's briefly describe what people mean when they say they have free will and um, just basically why it's impossible and why this question, why refuting free will is so important. Case, Enel, so let's start us off. Why, why, what do people mean when they have free will? Free will is the ability for human beings to make decisions independent of their genetics and conditioning. Totally right. impossible. Okay, right. In other words, like, you know, like who we are is a product of our genes and our personality is like 50% genetic and like how we were raised, our conditioning, our environment, what we learned, what we didn't learn. So free, people who say we have free will is we could decide completely independent of that stuff. Impossible, impossible. That's who ma who, what makes us who we are. That's how, what causes us to decide as we do. That's one way. All right, now, let, why is this like so important? The debate about free will is so important because all of society, most of society is based on a faulty premise that we have free will and decision making about free will you know it touches everything we do from how we go to school and who we talk to and crime and punishment and rewards and punishment and religion it touches everything okay the law cool. system, the system of law uh, and if it's all wrong even if it's you know 0.001% wrong when you mushrooms out in the butterfly effect it makes a huge difference in how you view Blaming other people and blaming yourself for mistakes and problems. Absolutely. And just like from the fundamental it's The biggest thing ever. touches everything. Yeah. Because our whole civilization is founded on, right. on something that's mistaken. That's something what I'm trying to say. Yeah. insane. You know, our criminal justice system, our educational system, our socio- everything. Heaven and hell is based on it. Being judged. Yeah. Yeah. So, and again, so, so it's the biggest thing ever. So, yeah. Because humanity is completely insane to the extent we believe in free will. All right, now, so like, again, Harris, Harris explains why we don't have free will in, in his book, but, but he gets a few things wrong now. He, what he gets right is that, like, he, he explains why everything has a cause and why causality makes free will impossible. Because, you know, if you have, if there's a cause to all of our decisions, our acts, our feelings and stuff, then there's a cause to that, a cause to that. That explains, you know, obviously free will is impossible. And then you have causes, a chain of cause and effect that stretches back to before we were born, determining what's happening in the present. Causality and determinism are pretty much synonymous. Okay, but, you know, here's the thing. So look, he also, Harris also gets how, like, the only alternative pretty much conceptually to things having causes, you know, determ to determinism, is things not having causes, what, what some people refer to as randomness or indeterminism. Um, so, like, Harris gets right, you know, it's very important for people to realize that if things don't have causes, because some people try to, like, say there's room for free will because not everything is determined or causal, Harris says, like, well, if things don't have causes, obviously they can't be caused by us. You know, we say this all the time, so I guess this right, but we, what we want to address is, like, that actually there is no such thing as a causality randomness. It's, it's just conceptually impossible. So here's what he says, page 27. Um, for, for instance, the biologist Martin Heisenberg has, and this is a different Heisenberg than Heisenberg of the Heisenberg. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, because that's Warner Heisenberg, 1927. This is a new guy. Um, <laughs> has observed that certain processes in the brain, such as the opening and closing of ion channels and the release of synaptic vesicles, occur at random and cannot therefore be determined by environmental stimuli. No, Sam, Sam, I mean, 
you know, like, again, like, basically what he's saying is this, this, this release of synaptic vesicles occurs for no reason. It just occurs for no cause. That is impossible. No, no, no. Explain it to him. Well, he's right. I mean, he's mostly wrong. But the thing is, if it were random, it still wouldn't prove free will. But the point is, nothing can be random. Right. And but even, I mean, I don't know if I should yell at Sam Harris or not because it doesn't really matter. He's trying to say there's no free will. It's, he's, he's saying free will doesn't exist. The reason why free will doesn't exist is because everything's caused. He's saying if things are random, there's also no free will. But we're telling Sam Harris right now, if you're listening, Sam, please don't believe in randomness. There's hidden variables. Everything has a cause. Stop being ridiculous, right? right. And but he's still going to prove there's no free will either way. So. Right, but again, like, it's, this is important because, like, the the reason the fundamental reason why free will is completely impossible is because everything must have a cause and like yes randomness does also refute free will but like you don't want to refute free will with something that doesn't exist because like it'll confuse people you know it's important but let's just to play it out right. let's say randomness did exist that means if i had a random release of neurotransmitters you know on a bus and i attacked the bus driver and I kill like 20 people and I end up, you know, going to jail. I mean, how am I at fault when something happened inside me I couldn't control? Exactly. I mean, I'll still go to jail, but I'm not going to go to hell because my lawyer is going to say he had no control over his random release of neurotransmitters in his brain. In his brain. Exactly. So, in other words, like, basically, yes, yeah, random in the sense of uncaused would not give you free will because, like, if, if something is, is that the argument he's making that random? Well, yeah, he gets that right. He so gets, why is he? But he's saying randomness exists. Yes. Okay, and, that's and, where he's going. Sam, and Sam, like Sam, this, Sam. This, this might be technical, but it's re very important. Sam, you got to get this right. I mean, because like you know, You're confuse people, not getting right. this right, it's kind of like people not getting that causality, cause and effect makes free will impossible. All right. To the to the extent you get this right, you can start writing about it. Start saying like you know. I mean, Forget randomness, yeah. Yeah, because he understands that free will is an internally inconsistent, incoherent concept, okay? And randomness, true randomness, a causality, is equally internally inconsistent, impossible. Think about it, Sam. How could something happen without a cause? You know, think about it in terms of the universe. These vesicles open, close, whatever. <laughs> it was completely determined by the state of the universe at the moment before that which was completely determined by the state of the universe before that. People get intimidated because there's so many variables. Like when you say the, the, the lottery, the ping pong balls being sucked out is random, there's just there's like a million variables, like the, the, how much uh, grease of your finger goes on the ball and the weight of the ball and the paint. But if you knew every single variable, like the suction of the wind and how each ball was placed in, you would know every time what balls were coming out. But there's probably like a million variables, so you, you just say it's random. Right. But if you knew every variable of a human being or a weather system or the ping pong uh, lottery balls, you would get, you, it's not random, it's, there's variables there that are too many to number. Right, and what confuses a lot of so that's people... that's confusing, yeah. Harris, I think, is intimidated by the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. Basically, in Too many quantum variables, mechanics, yeah. yeah. yeah no. Here's the thing, Sam. Okay, in quantum mechanics, you can't simultaneously measure the position of, and momentum of a particle because Heisenberg and other uncertainty principles prohibit that, okay? You can't do that. Fine. So that means we don't have all the information necessary to make a prediction. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make the behavior a causal. Exactly. That's an important thing. Um, not else? to mention the subconscious and unconscious, because you don't know all the causes doesn't mean they're not there. Right. Um, that's a different well, that's a take thing. on the same thing. Again, with, with, with quantum mechanics, and, and, and in order to understand how quantum mechanics is actually com completely causal, completely deterministic, uh, Lawrence Krauss, who just wrote, I think, Something from Nothing, this, this, this book, um, you mm -hmm. know, popular book, here's how I un understand this. In quantum mechanics, here's that they, they basically make predictions based on probabilities, okay? And here's the thing. They can't, using classical mechanics, simultaneously measure the position and momentum of a single particle. So what do they do? In, in quantum mechanics, you can simultaneously measure the position and the mo momentum of a group of particles, okay? So that's how it starts. With quantum mechanics, you measure the position and momentum of a group of particles, and you measure it not just once, but twice, I don't know how many times, a series of, of measurements of this group of particles, all right? Now, from measuring 
completely classically, completely Newtonian physics, you know, deterministically, absolutely deterministically, this group of particles, that's how the, they derive the probabilities that they apply, therefore, to the individual particles. Because so, you got to get this. So, so in, in other words, to understand this, you would have to explain how a particle, single particle, behaves indeterministically without cause, because, again, it's completely irrational, completely conceptual. Anyway, I want to go back to what you said before. Well, well, let me think. Okay, okay. Just last. So, like, okay. in order to, like, establish this, how could a particle behave indeterministically without cause when it's a single particle, then all, this, all of a sudden when it's a group, you know, behaves like um, deterministically or with causes, that's conceptually impossible. Go ahead. You said quantum mechanics is based on probabilities. Were you saying something like that? Right, absolutely. But probabilities are completely causal. Yes. I mean, you go to Vegas or whatever, and there's probability you're going to roll a one and a one that, that's caused by, you know, one, one over six times one over six is like... Two, one, two snake eyes is like one out of 36. So it's causal. It's based on, you know, how you roll the die and the, the momentum and how it bounced on. The, it's totally causal. Exactly. So, so you're not escaping causality because you're going to give me some gibberish about probabilities. I know. And again, Sam, like if, if you, you know, just think about what it means for something to be truly random in the sense of uncaused. It doesn't make sense. You're, you're basically saying that it just happens... You but know. I'm saying you were quoting something saying that quantum physics is based on probabilities. Right. So That proves causality, just alone. Yes, because... Because proba probabilities are causal. Because you have to... And the probabilities is a mathematical it's, construct. It's a mathematical These construct, mathematical, formula, yeah, and right. Like, mathematics is about measuring reality. It's not about defining reality. In other words, like, you can, like, mathematically subtract two from one and get a negative one. You can't subtract two apples from, from one apple and get a negative apple. It doesn't exist. So, so in Zero, this case, yeah. so like basically what happens is like probabilities are the equations that are derived from the measurement of the groups, again, the classical, completely deterministic measurement of the groups of particles in order to derive the, the, the equations, the probabilities to then determine the, the measurement of a single particle, you know, the, the prediction. So basically probabilities don't speak to the idea of whether something it's caused. It's, it's, it's talking about prediction. Okay, but again, but the, the more important reason, Sam, people, <laughs> nothing can happen that's uncaused because that something happening uncaused, it's incoherent, internally inconsistent. It makes no sense, okay? Did we get this? Well, the beginning of the universe, that's a trick. That'll, that'll throw you off because what caused that? All right, and okay, you got, so you believe in steady state then? No, no, no. Let's let's address this. infinite. There is a certain point in our universe where logic breaks down. It doesn't break down for this, but it, it does <laughs> break right. down for the like the beginning uh, of everything. Right. In other words, we say to ourselves, well, like, you know, if we conclude that there was a beginning of everything, that doesn't make sense because we say, well, how did it arise? You know, it must have happened somehow. It couldn't just like have begun from nothing. So then we say there must have been something before, and then we, then we say, like, it must be eternal, right? But as soon as we say, you know, everything must be eternal, we say to ourselves, wait a minute. How could it be eternal? It must have started at some point. That's, like, mind-blowing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Again, we can't figure out how the universe started, nor can Sam Harris or Deepak Chopra, any of these guys. We can refute free will for the lifespan of a human being, which is anywhere between 0 and 120, 30 years. So that's what we're about. There's no such thing as free will. How the universe started, I don't really care. I right, mean, so I care, but I'm not interested in figuring it out because I don't think I'll get anywhere. Right, the okay, real so point is human beings do not have a free will. Right, we say, let's just say it, I mean, well, yeah. for idiots. We do not have, we're not exploring, the, we are exploring, but there's no more exploring. We've explored it, we figured out there's no free will. Yes. That's why it's called No Free Will. I, I name my show, if you watch it, No Free Will. I'm no longer exp exploring and arguments are over. Yes. So... One, can I just say one thing I think Sam Harris did a little wrong? I mean, his book is great, but Sam, I get the feeling that you don't get the... I mean, I browsed and I've watched you on YouTube. You don't really get how big this is. I mean, it seems like you're onto something else and something else. I heard you say somewhere that someone asked you, what would you do if this was real? And you said, I'm not going to worry about it because it's not going to happen in my lifetime. Well, Sam, it can happen in your lifetime if you care and get more passionate about this topic and don't go on to something else. Stick with the no free will. Stick with the illusion free will. And make that your life's purpose. You're, we need you 
to not just say and poo-poo it, oh, here's a book, now I'm on to another book about ethics and God and morality, or whatever the hell you're doing, write another book about free will, and then another book, and five books, 20 books. Don't go on to a different topic. This is the holy grail of topics. Absolutely. That's what I think he did wrong. I don't get the feeling from him that he really, really cares about how big this is, like he, we do. He doesn't. I don't, he doesn't get how entirely like big he's probably right now, if he's watching this, he's all, I'm writing a book about, does God have morality or whatever? Stick to this one. Don't don't go to the next topic. Stick with the free will stuff. Sam, it's much we, better. We start the show with a quote by John Searle that proving free will to be an illusion would be bigger than Einstein, Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, and Darwin. It's true. It's the biggest thing in an entire world. It's nothing like but this But don't you get the happened. feeling from him that his publisher said, Sam, you should write a book about free will. He's like, yeah, I should write a, like an argument. Let's get it over. Let's move to the next thing. It'll sell. It'll do really no, I well. Know. I don't feel like he's sticking to it. I don't think he's passionate about it. I agree completely. He's done the world a huge service, but if he understood the significance of this, he wouldn't go on to other things. I think he just published a book And online. the other thing I think he's off on is that he's an atheist. I think God does exist. It's the universe. It's the cosmos. It's the energy of the cosmos. It's the cause and effect monster. He seems very atheistic every time. He just doesn't seem to, you know, I don't yeah, know what, well, he doesn't define God like we do as a universe. Right. Well, he says he doesn't believe in God, so right. Basically, that's I think, my opinion. I don't he, know. No, no, I think the God that he's refuting is the God of the Bible, the God of the Old Testament, the Judeo-Christian yeah. Islamic God. And he we does, agree yeah. with him. There is no, you know, there was no Garden of Eden. The first woman wasn't pulled from the rib of the first man and stuff. But like, you know, if you consider the, the three basic attributes of God that are generally accepted among most or all, religions if god is um and we're going to do a show on this if yeah, god is omnipresent that means god is everywhere so the universe is everywhere is god if god is omniscient that means that god know, knows everything the universe so knows everything the yeah. universe has to be self-conscious because like the the universe is also if god is omnipotent that means that he's all powerful so the universe has the laws of nature that govern everything so in order to govern everything you have to be aware of everything so the universe has to be omniscient and and omnipotent so basically you could you could like and cuz like sam i mean like this is great that like you're refuting the classical the, the traditional religion cuz it's just so so harmful but if you could like tell people and maybe you have, I haven't read his books, but if you can tell people that like, you know, if you want to like see God as synonymous with the universe, that makes sense. You know, in other words, like, so we're not, so that the universe isn't a thing, it's kind of like a person. Yeah, I've just seen a few things on YouTube with him. He see, I don't really know, but he seems to not believe in God uh, the way, you know, if, no, he, it, if we just told right. Sam Harris, the universe, the cosmos, how it moves around, the or, you know, the, the the energy of the cause and effect robotic monster that it is, and I call that God. He might agree. Right. No, he, he's he, he's ref he's saying that he doesn't believe in God because God allows so much pain and suffering. He doesn't believe in that type of God. And he's true. Like a, I don't believe that either. Like for example, like, like a, yeah, I believe in God, but I can't believe that God is all good. I mean, like Harris like makes this point. Like if God is all good, there would be no pain or evil in the world because God is all powerful. And he definitely doesn't think that one religion has it right over it. Like, he doesn't think that, like, I don't know, like, one religion believes in this God. He thinks, you know, he thinks God is neutral, that he's not playing favorites. No, I know. That's from what I saw. I mean, Does that make any sense? Yeah, he his, his refutation of God, he's re refuting basically the conventional, you know, Judeo-Islamic Christian conception of God. And he's completely right. That, that God non -judge doesn't judgmental exist. God. A neutral God, yeah. Right, but, then, but again, then he would be right. But yeah. you can define God as the universe and, and salvage. Because, like, you know, Sam, like, <laughs> we're we're kind of like showing, telling people that they're robots, puppets. Nothing we do is up to them. You know, people kind of like need a God. You know, so like we just say like God is the universe. Right. How, all the laws of the universe is God. Okay. Doesn't play favorites and doesn't judge man's will because because we don't have one. I hear. You. I wanted judge to our actions right. So like we we kind of like tangent. We we segued into this kind of like thing that like fundamentally, you know, the question of whether was, there was a beginning, a first cause, or where every, everything was eternal, transcends logic, okay? That's given, that's accepted. But, after the Big Bang, you know, at the time of the Bang forward, everything must have a cause, okay? So that, you know, randomness is impossible. True randomness, conceptually, you cannot have anything having without, you cannot have anything happen without a cause, if it's after the Big Bang, because the Big Bang is the cause of everything. Think about it. Okay, and don't get intimidated by the Copenhagen interpretation. It makes no sense. Okay, just because you can't simultaneously measure... So you agree with me, the, the thing that he's most, I'm most upset with Sam is that he doesn't seem to care that much about this topic to really bring it to where it needs to go. Well, you I mean... You feel like he just kind of wrote the book. His publisher said, hey, Sam, write this book about the illusion of free will. Make a, kill, a financial killing... We'll make a lemonade, and then you can just write a quick 100-page book 
and you'll move on to the next thing. Like, you know, does God have a religion or whatever? I don't know. What's he up to now? Do you even know? I don't. His think last he, book was online. Which but is I don't think he's book, really I pushed. Right. I don't think he's settled on this and just made it his life's passion. No, he's, you're right. I mean, he was just in Australia. Maybe I'm wrong. He was just, no, he, do, he does like he was invited to Australia to some kind of conference that they're refuting like, you know, wrongful, bad beliefs. And, and he presents, he wrote an article um, recently on how and why actually not believing in free will is a good thing. Like you can like still. So he is sticking with this? Yeah, but not too much. Not too much. Not too much. I mean, like you don't get the feeling that's his, his real passion in life to be the Messiah of no free will, no. which and is Sam, what we need. Sam, again, if he doesn't, he doesn't feel comfortable in that role. I don't know. No, and it's, you can't blame he him. He could run for president. I he's mean, done. He a major could change thing. the whole world with that little book. If he says there's no free will, I'm going to push this down everybody's throat till everybody gets it. He's the guy, but he doesn't seem to care that much. Well, because I heard in an interview, someone asked him and said, "What are you going to do? What are you? Aren't you afraid that your book is right? It's going to change everything." He said, "I'm not worried about it. It's not going to." happen in my lifetime, so I'm not yeah. worried about it. Sam, don't it could. be so pessimistic. It, it could. could happen in five years. Right. If we make it happen, it'll happen. And, he, and we need him, and he needs us. Right. And why is this so important? Because we got climate change for the next three, four decades, and if we don't get this right about free will, build, and illusion... Nothing to do with climate change. Just getting it right because it's the truth. No, but like... Just get climate. it right. No, I know. What other reason do we come to Earth for? The human beings want to get this. We have to... We're going to get it right eventually. Why not in our lifetime? If Sam is basically saying we're going to get this right. He's not worried about it because it won't happen. He's probably 40, 40 years old. So in the year 2300, he's saying, I'm not interested. Sam, get interested. It's going to happen in your lifetime. We need you. Yeah, and again, That's if, the point. If, if Sam, like, again, you've done something major, something huge, but like if, if Stick you with don't it. stay with this, right. like, God willing, the universe willing, somebody Don't like you want to witness this in your well, lifetime? Somebody, it's definitely happening. Like bestseller, yeah. All right. So I'm glad you agree with me. That's one of his big mistakes is not... Yeah, yeah. I know. right. And you've got to be optimistic about this. You've got to, like, understand... It feels like, oh, here's a, a book world. on free will. It just feels like, oh, I wrote, you know, leave me alone. Right. Yeah. Well, no, no, I'm, I don't know. All right, whatever. <laughs> But again, he's, he's... Well, we're done, not going away. He's done the world a major... Right? Service. We're not... You're never going to lose interest in this. No, you I can't. And I'll right. tell you why, Sam. It's so big. The world, because, like... You care. Yeah. Once you understand how insane it is to believe in free will, you don't want to believe it. You don't want to go, you know, live your life on a lie, on an untruth, on an insanity. So, like... So, you know, and Al and I understand that free will is impossible. A lot of people understand this, but it's one thing to And it hurts us to it. live on a planet with that, so we want to change it. Right. It's one thing, though, to understand that free will is impossible. It's another thing to recondition yourself in order to have that understanding apply to your life. In other words, I'm getting a lot better. When somebody does something wrong, like, you know, the universe made you be a little late for, for our first taping and stuff. I didn't blame you at all. I, 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 immediately I said, well, it wasn't Anel's fault. It's like, that's the way the universe wanted it. It's like, when I do stuff wrong, I do stuff wrong all the time. I mean, look at the show. I mean, like, you know, like, no, it's just like, you know. Yeah, I, you're right. Right, you know, I, this show could be much more professional, whatever, but, like, I accept that, you know. We're learning. Right. So the idea is, like, you know, to the extent that we incorporate, internalize this truth that the free will is an illusion, we can create a far, far better world. And I think you get this. You, you, we'll talk about it well, later. Well, you can he, still be upset when things don't go your way. You just don't blame yourself or hate yourself because it could not be any other way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Okay. But if this certain person that's in my life is passed away somewhere and she never calls me i'm gonna be very very upset with the universe not her or me right you know what i'm saying right right so that's like should help me a little bit get through this if she's, if she's watching all right so we got like a little under four i'll minutes. let you i'll let so you like, finish up now again yeah i want to explain that like so sam doesn't really get that that randomness true randomness a causality is impossible but he does get that randomness makes free will impossible yes so he says like on page 28 if my decision to have a second cup of coffee this morning was due to a random release of, neur of neurotransmitters, how could the indeterminacy of that initiating event count as the free, will, the free exercise of my will? Chance occurrences are, by definition, ones for which I can claim no responsibility. So that's very important. So again, for anyone who thinks that, like, that there is true randomness, things happening without a cause, that cannot give you free will. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we got about three minutes left. Let's go to the commercial. This is like part three. You know, I'm just curious. Why are you upset that Sam Harris, even though he has the right conclusion that randomness does not prove free will, which is our goal, you seem to be a little upset with Sam. I hope he's watching. Why 
you feel like I feel like you're let down with him that he actually believes in randomness. Why don't you elaborate on that? Because like, all right, again, because like for somebody, he's not perfect. No, 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 it's not his fault. And he's conditioned to believe it's in randomness. It's not random. his fault. Okay. I'm not. But I sense him. that you lo- lose. I a little want per- him to get it. It's not like I want him to get it because like it's so it's so insane. It's so like oh, okay. difficult to understand how people don't understand causality that like everything must have a cause, and if everything must have a cause, then like free will is completely impossible. And it impossible. makes randomness so, impossible. So it's equally insane. It's equally illogical for anyone to conclude that, conclude that some things can happen without a cause. He's a smart guy. Randomness to me means luck or unluck. Luck or unluck is you're not in control of it. Right, and a lot of times, one of the problems is like there are different meanings of random. For I could have a deck of cards as I pick one out at random. That means like you're not like going to pick one out like counting from one side yeah. or the other. It's like, but that's a figure of spree- that's speech. That's a figure that's of speech. That's not true yeah. randomness. Okay, so again, this is like part three of Free Will with Sam Harris gets right and wrong. And, like, we're going to go into part four because we're not done with this. What about no free will and praying to God? It looks very fascinating. We're going to have to do that, you know, the next time. We can't do it today. Mm -hmm. This is it. It's fascinating. All right, so, like, this is the biggest thing ever. I just want to quickly say a thing about God. If you believe in God and God knows everything, that also automatically means free will is impossible. Would you like to quickly say why? Is it... Absolutely. If, if, if God is all powerful and knows everything, and knows, if God knows everything, He knew a million years ago what you'd be doing today, what you'd be saying today. Obviously, if He, if he knew and He's infallible. What if people say, I believe in God, but He doesn't know everything? He knows well, something. No, well, that's a different thing. People say that God is omniscient. That's the belief. But what if they say God and I co create together? We're in a uh, baton race. It's no, a tag well, team match. I do like some things, people, he does something. People believe that God is all powerful. Oh, and that, like, that some, makes free will impossible. And, and some people say, like, well, if he's all powerful, he can grant us a free will because he's all powerful. But then there's like this paradox like, can God create a boulder so large that even he couldn't? No, remember it? you said that if God created people with free will and they went around and messed everything up, they still are not to blame because God gave them free will to mess everything up absolutely in other words if god created us then we're not responsible for anything because like if you create a robot he goes out and wreaks havoc and you're in front of a judge the judge is not going to blame the robot that you allegedly gave free will to he's going to blame you (laughs) exactly right all right that's it so So again if you believe in god you automatically have taken yourself out of believing in free will it's automatic it goes it's axiomatic goes together you believe in god no free will God knows everything. That's it. We'll see you again next time on Exploring Illusion Free Will. Thanks.